All right, I wanted to make this video real quick about this whole factoring tens thing. Um, it's because it's it's pretty straightforward, but at the same time, it's it kind of seems a little redundant um, of why we're doing this. Um, so I just kind of wanted to explain the reasoning behind it and the whole point of what's going on right now in math. So let's just kind of start with the basics, and this kind of what I was talking with the kids about. So if we factor out um, five times three, so factoring means when you take a number and you think of another multiplication way of making that number. So for example, 5 is really nothing more than 5 times 1. Okay, it seems pretty common sense, right? That 5 ones is 5 times 1, and then 3 is 3 times 1. So when we're looking at it and we break it up, what I want the kids to see is really they're taking the 5 and the 3 and multiplying those together right here, and then that's how they get 15. And really 15 is, you know, 15 times 1 and that's 15 ones. And that's great and all because both of these, the 5 and the 3, are in the ones place. But all of a sudden, when we start getting a little bit bigger and we start dealing with the tens place, we need to build off of that basic knowledge. So what we have here is, of course, we still have the 5, which is, once again, 5 times 1. And now we need to think about what 30 is. Well, 30 is nothing more than 3 tens, if they know their place value. And 3 tens is really the same thing as saying we have 3 times 10. And when they look at it this way, this is why when we do 5 times 30 in our head mentally, we really are doing the 5 times the 3. Well, now this shows you why, because you can do that using the property. So now we know that we can go ahead and do 5 times 3 separately. And then what we need to recognize is what's going on in the other part is that we're doing the ones place from the 5 times the tens place from the, thir the 30. And what we end up getting left with is, of course, the 15 times the 10, because we're in the tens place. And so what we were talking about in class today is that this really leaves us with, really, to be honest with you, 15 tens. And we also have been learning in class that whenever you move from place value to place value, so ones to tens or tens to hundreds or hundreds to a thousand and so on and so forth, it is a multiple of ten. So what the kids know by now is that ten tens is, is the same thing as one hundred. So fifteen tens would be ten tens and five tens or otherwise known as one hundred fifty. So the shortcut that we've been talking about in class 2 is basically just take the two single digits, the 5 times the 3, and get 15. And then however many zeros you have in the equation, which we have 1 here, that's what gets tacked on to our answer down here is 150. But that's great and all, but if they ever need to be able to explain it using place value, they can talk about the factoring and how 30 is really just 3 tens or 3 times 10, and then we can get around it that way. So now we're getting a little bit bigger, and this is kind of what we were doing in class um, today. So 50 times 30, if we're really going to factor this out, the pattern stays the same. So we're going to get, of course, 5 times 10 for what 50 was, and then 30 is going to be 3 times 10. So once again, we're left with what we want, the single digits, 5 and 3. So we want to keep those together once again. So 5 times 3 and 1. And then now over here in the other parentheses, we're dealing with a tens place times a tens place. So we have 10 times 10 there. Okay. So what we have from here is keeping the, the commuted property and being able to do whatever we, we want with our numbers and moving our numbers around. What we, of course, end up with is 5 times 3 is 15. And we're going to multiply that, well, by 10 times 10, and 10 times 10 was 100. So this is where you get those two zeros from, is because you did 10's place times the 10's place got you to 100. So what we really have here is 15 hundreds. Well, that's great, 15 hundreds, but what does that really mean in normal numbers, and how would that really look on paper? So once again, if you have 15 hundreds, you have 10 hundreds and 5 hundreds. Well, ten hundreds, the kids know, because once again, that place value is ten hundreds is a thousand. So this equals one thousand, and then five hundreds, well, of course, is five hundred. 
So this is the part where kids were, you know, starting to really get it today and, and seeing why 50 times 30 is equal to 1,500. And not just saying, oh, well, Mr. R, 5 times 3 is 15 and tack on two zeros. Great. Yes, I get that. And that you can do mentally, and that's great. You can get to the answer mentally. That's awesome. But you do need to know how to explain it as well. And that's not so easy sometimes when you're trying to word your way through and get your way through this. So the kids need to be able to be able to recognize um, where to put these numbers and where to put these digits in the factoring. So a lot of times what they might see is something that looks like this. And then what they'll get is parentheses, what I kind of called the, the skeleton of what we were doing, kind of borrowed that from Ebley, the skeleton, and they have to be able to fill these in. And so let's say I give them the 10 here and a 10 here, and they have to fill in these blanks, okay? So we're just going to keep going, and then maybe we have a blank here, and a blank there, and then they tell them here that this is going to be 10 times 10 over here. So they just have to fill in the puzzle pieces. So once again, they have to understand that this, this 60 right here is, of course, factored in over here. So 60 is nothing more than 6 times 10. And then this 30 is going to be factored over here, and 30 is nothing more than 3 times 10. And so then this 6 and that 3, well, should have wrote the 6 first, but oh well, um, goes there as well. Okay, so they just need to be able to fill in those blanks, and then of course we understand that this is going to be 18 times 100, which is 1800, otherwise known as 1800. So I hope this video hopefully cleared up a little bit of why we're doing the factoring, um, but ultimately on the end of the test, uh, they just going to need to know how to do 60 times 30. They should be able to do that mentally and get 18 with two zeros which, of course, equates out to be 1,800.